great way to start this morning building a Crown Alpha inspired case. Uh, I've already milled up all my stock. I did this last weekend and I let it sit in the shop for a week and uh, it's, it stayed very flat and straight so I'm good to go there. First thing I want to do is start construction of the base assembly. Here are all the pieces for the base for the cabinet. Uh, all the pieces are fairly small. I'm not going to bother sanding them. I'm just going to take a hand plane. I've got a simple planing stop set up and I've got my, my plane set up for very light pass. And I just want to take these machine marks off of here. And these will be actually, with one or two passes, be ready right for the finish at that point. It took about 15-20 minutes to smooth the faces of these pieces. And all I want to do is I, I want to keep the, these as square as much as possible. However, I do want to break the edge. I'm just going to go two light passes over with the hand plane, block plane on each corner. And I just want to soften that edge just a little bit. I've got all the pieces laid out here. And what I want to do is look for the best possible grain. Um, I also want the, the, the points of the, the grain or the cathedral tip of the, the grain to run upward. So I've got all that grain pointed up. And I want to put the straight grain or the side grain in the front of the legs. And I think those are going to be the two front pieces. And those will be the two back pieces. So on the top of them, we're going to put a triangle on the end. And then mark which one's going to the front. Now that I've got the legs figured out where they're going to go, we'll take the front legs and set them aside. There's going to be a stretcher that goes between the two back legs. And that's this piece right here. And again, I want the edge grain to show forward, but I also want a good piece up on top that'll be the show face. And that'll go like that. I just need to mark that. where that's going. Now on each side there's going to be another structure that goes like this. And again, I want to look at the grain and that looks pretty good. to lay out for the uh, joinery. Now I've got the front facing me and this is the front of the piece. Um, I've got two pieces that are going to be the front and back rail and I want to choose the best one that again is going to go on the front and be the show face. So I like that right there. I'm going to mark this. And again, I'm just going to keep going around the whole piece to make sure I get the, the, the best grain on the face of the piece that we're going to see. I decided the best way to attach these uh, stretchers to the legs is with dowels, which is something I don't use very often. So what I've done here is I've put a couple pieces, and I'm going to use these side rails as spacers. 
and my MFT table helps me get this all laid out. I've got a couple shims, I've got a couple pieces of blue tape where these are going to go. And I just want to set those in there. And I'm just going to mark across blue tape. I'm going to put the reference edge of the dowling jig to cut the dowels. And I'll do this to the other side and I'll also do this to the structure that goes in between the, the, the two side pieces. Well, if you've ever used a dowling jig before, it's, it's pretty straightforward. There's a, um, a line on here. All I need to do is align it with the mark that's on my board and tighten it down and these are supposedly self-centering. It's not perfectly centered, it's pretty darn close. But uh, you're always referencing off the same face. Because that's again, that's where I have the tape so I can see the line that I did. So I've got my drill bit set up with the stop collar. And I just need to drill these holes. I'm getting ready to mark out the joinery for the rails on the uh, top part of the legs. I'm going to be using dominoes to do this. And because of the thickness of these and the thickness of the rail, and the size of the dominoes I want to use, I'm not going to be able to put them right here like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset them. On the front rail, I'm going to be putting one here, and on the side rails, one's going to be going here. So that way they won't hit in the middle. So I've got a ruler with a stop on it. I just want to mark where those dominoes are going to go on here. Take this, put it down, and make that same mark where the tenon is going to go on the legs. I've got one of the rails clamped into my tabletop, and uh, I'm going to be using 8 by 40 millimeter dominoes. These are going to go in 25 millimeters on the rails and 15 millimeters on the legs. So I've got my my depth adjustment made and uh, I just need to make the cut. Now that I've cut the mortises and the rails, I'm getting ready to cut the mortises and the legs. Um, I've reset the depth on this to 15 millimeters and uh, I just need to line this up and make the cut. Not that I can see that fence line on the walnut with my really old eyes, but one last thing I need to do before I glue this all up. I've got my stacked dado head cutter and the uh, table saw. I've got a mark where I want to put these. What I want to do is I want to put a quarter inch deep, three quarter inch wide dado along the inside face of these rails. Uh, that'll give me some, some place to put some glue blocks for some extra support and also a place where I can attach the top case to them. I'm getting ready to do the glue up. I've got uh, one of the sides. I'm going to do the sides first. Let those set and then attach the sides to the two front rails. Uh, what I need to do is put some glue on the end of the rails and into the, into the domino hole. Make sure that's spread around. I'm not going to put any glue on the, on the uh, legs, just on the ends of these. With the domino, that should be more than enough. Well, after a little bit of fussing, I've got it in the clamps. Uh, it's nice and square, and I'll put this aside and get started on the other one.
Well, I've got the two sides out of the clamps now, and I, I took some time to, to plane down the, the, the rails to the legs to make sure they're nice and flush on the outside. And now I'm just getting ready to glue up the two sides with the front rails. So let's get to it. Here's the piece all glued up. Um, Checked it for square and it's nice and square. I measured the diagonals and uh, glued up very nice. This was a rather challenging glue up. I was kind of surprised, but uh, I always like a challenge now and then. I'm going to let this sit overnight and then tomorrow I need to clean it up a little bit. So that's it for today on this. Well, I've got the piece out of the clamps and uh, I just want to take a few minutes and I've done some of this already, but I've, I've flushed the, all the rails to the legs. And I also want to flush all the tops together. I'm just going to use my hand plane to do this. Just very light passes. I just want to make sure, this is actually the final pass. Just want to make sure that these are all nice and flat and even all the way around. Now that I've got the tabletop nice and flat, and I know it's square all the way around the outside and flat, I'm going to put a 45 degree chamfer all the way along the top edge of this. I'm just going to use my router table to do that. done that uh, you can see how that adds a real nice visual detail to this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the measurements directly off the top of this and that's going to determine the actual size of the cabinet that goes on top of this base but the the base is pretty much done uh, there's going to need to be some a little bit of final sanding with 220 but uh, like I said other than that it's it is complete